Welcome to Back to My Garden. Discover your passion for gardening. Here's Dave Ledoux. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world when you listen to this. I'm Dave Ledoux, and welcome to another episode of Back to My Garden. We're going all the way across the world today to the West Coast. Uh, Jennifer loves plants, gardening in the beautiful outdoors, and chatting about growing with friendly gardeners. Gardening professionally gives her the opportunity to embrace and meld all three together. She believes that gardening engages the mind as well as the body and is an amazing outlet for creativity. Jennifer joins us from the San Francisco Bay Area. I want to welcome to the show Jennifer Simmons. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, good morning. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I can't wait. I've given you a little introduction. And I yeah. want to get to know you better, and the listeners want to hear your stories. Jennifer, take, okay. a, take a minute or two and just share with us a little bit about your background and how you got into gardening. Well, um, I kind of grew up around gardening. My great-grandmother and my grandmother were always taking pictures of plants and um, flowers, and my grandmother always had lots of plants and trees and succulents and all those things growing up in um San Jose, California, you have that warm, nice weather. So we can pretty much grow anything we want. Um, actually, not lately because of drought. But um, And then when I got my own place, I pretty much started doing my own gardening. I just wanted it to look a certain way. And I put pots around and I laid flagstone and I did things like that. And then when I had my first uh, son, I was home. Um, and I would garden with him um, around my neighborhood, and people started to notice. Um, so I would help them with their gardens. Um, and then when my son got older, I helped with the school, doing sort of like a kid's garden, um, you know, gardening with children. And then I realized, you know, this is just really something I want to do. I mean, I'd, I mean, can I get paid do it, to do this? I mean, it would be great if I could do that. Um, so I went to a program um, in Los Altos at Foothill. Um, it's a, a junior college, and it's uh, I got my um, A.S. in environmental horticulture, and um, that is actually where I met my boss. I met her at a Bernard Trainer conference with Pacific Horticulture, which was a favorite magazine of mine. Um, and, uh, I was actually talking to his plantsman, Bernard Trainer's plantsman, and he was saying, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I, I'm a gardener. I want to garden. I don't want to design. I don't want to draw. I, I want to be in the dirt. And he's like, oh, well, you should talk to, um, Amy. She takes care of a lot of our garden. And I talked to her and told her I could be her intern. And, uh, the rest is history. I've been working for her for about four years now. Um, we pretty much intensely manage about um I think I wrote it down like fifty gardens um around the Palo Alto, Atherton, Woodside, Los Altos area. So pretty much Silicon Valley. Um there are a lot of beautiful gardens around here. So we have our work cut out for us for sure. <laughs> wow. Very cool stuff. Excellent. That's yeah. a good... um you don't do Google or any that would be enormous. Um, we have, well, it's all residential, um, so we have everything from, you know, a little postcard garden uh, to two acres, so it's all residential. So um, we have, you know, pretty nice clients, Facebook people, Google people, uh, you name it, I mean... We have them. <laughs> nice. That's wonderful. So, um, and actually my boss's boss is uh, a pretty well-known designer in um, the peninsula named Debbie Ruskin. And she's been designing for 20 years, 30 years. So um, we take care of a lot of her gardens as well. Um, but it's all residential. I think we have like maybe an apartment building or something, but I don't really go there. So um, we have about, we have three to four crews of guides that um, help us do everything and we boss them around and stuff like that <laughs> you, you so. said something interesting because you're in a beautiful climate but you've had this unbelievable drought yeah what's yeah. that been like for you at work with this crazy drought you know it's been really interesting i mean i've always loved uh succulents and cacti um 
And, you know, working with uh, Bernard Trainer, I, I mean, I don't know if your listeners know who he is, but he's a pretty well-known garden designer. Um, he uses a lot of restios and grasses. Um, so we, we pretty much, uh, you know, minded that way as far as what we pick for clients. Plus that stuff is like bulletproof. A lot of times, you know, you can pretty much plant it, get it established, and you're done. Um, although, I take that back. Yesterday, I was working in a garden, and I was pruning some chondropetalum pectorum, and I was just like, wow, this is such a low-maintenance plant until it's not. <laughs> so, um, you know, with the drought, we're just getting our clients to be more mindful of that. And actually, they're coming around, too. You know, hey, turn our water off. Let's see. Let's get rid of our grass. Let's try Daimondia, or um, let's try a thyme lawn, or... Um, you know, we have a lot of really great clients. One of our clients, her garden, she almost let that thing die this, this summer because her plant, a lot of her plants are Mediterranean plants. And we were all worried. We we're like biting our nails all summer. Like, should we turn the water? And she's like, no, let's not turn it on. Let's see what happens. And we got a really nice rainstorm in December and her garden just, boom, it was alive. And it was amazing to see the plants really adapt to that. It was it was very cool, very cool. You know, you say Mediterranean and you think, well, it's hot, but it needs a lot of rain. But there are some yeah. de- desert-like areas like in Greece and the mountains of Italy and Spain. Yeah. Man, that must be yeah, so cool. Yeah. I can't even fathom, you know, you say, oh, everything started blooming in December. And, you know, we've got yeah. <laughs> sub-freezing temperatures and snow on the ground. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't get a break. We don't get a break. And, and, you know, that's the thing about being a maintenance manager. You know, I'm maintaining all these gardens. And, you know, these clients, they can have anything they want. And, you know, we it's, it's kind of a balance because I try to explain to them, I'm like, you know, if we were living on the East Coast or somewhere else, this would be covered with snow. You know, right now, just kind of, this is our time to kind of relax, but really, our dormant period here in, in, in the Bay Area is more summertime. I mean, that's kind of when we slow down because it's pretty hot. And you don't really want to be doing a lot of gardening and planting when it's really, really hot. We like to plant in the fall and in the spring. And we actually do a lot of planting in the winter. So, yeah, it's kind of a little backward here, <laughs> maybe, for other, you know, as far as other people go. You've got these... 50 gardens. Is there anything that when you go into a garden, you go, oh, no, you know, it's going to be a problem or a certain plant that maybe frustrates you? Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, living in Palo Alto, uh, Palo Alto is a whole different world. There's a lot of boxwood. Um, There's a lot of, you know, traditional type gardens with um, azaleas and rhododendrons and camellias and to me I mean I love all gardens and I love all plants but those things are sort of in the wrong place and they just never quite look good um, and also too when I see soil you know that just looks like it's tired and hasn't been updated um, with compost or any amendments um, you know, you can tell those gardens, they have a feel. It's like you walk in and you're kind of like, it's not alive here. It's just sad plants, <laughs> um, sad soil. And we really try to, you know, some people won't compromise. They want their azaleas. They want their rhododendrons. They just don't do that well here. So we're always amending, amending, amending. And, you know, thank God we don't have a lot of those clients, but they're there, you know. So that that frustrates me, but... And then, you know, there's the, the ladies in Atherton that want the, you know, flats and flats of annuals color. You know, they're having parties and you're planting annuals and watering like crazy. And, you know, that kind of stuff kind of got me at first, but I've gotten used to it. And we don't do it as much, especially now with the drought. So that's actually been a good excuse. <laughs> nice. Since I have you, I have to ask you about amending soil. I'm always... Uh-huh. asking about secrets. Like, do you have a bag of tricks that you love uh, for composting or amending or mulching? Well, we have a really great uh, resource here um, in the Bay Area called Linkso Garden Materials. And we use a lot of their compost. They've got like the diesel compost, which is like the 
Diesel is a farm that raises turkeys and chickens, I think, and um, there's a lot of compost from there. But really, I mean, I kind of, I'm, I don't have the luxury of being in one place for a long period of time, but I need stuff that's going to be good and I can just leave it and come back in a couple weeks or a month and it's going to be good. So, um, I really like alfalfa. I really like, um, you know, I'm trying to think what I use. I use a lot of organic. I mean, pretty much only organic, any kind of, you know, chicken manure, uh, like E.B. Snow, any of those organic stuff. I just love it. Plus, plus, you know, if you have compost, I mean, you got it. It's it's good. And we have a lot of clay here. Uh, and that's why, you know, too, when it does rain here, it really gets trapped because we have the clay. It's not real, real fast draining. So we don't really need a lot of amendment. But definitely if I'm doing azaleas or rhododendrons, I'm going to go and get the, you know, acid planting mixes and all that kind of stuff. It has to kind of be ready to go. I wanted to ask you, Jennifer, you're running around doing 50 gardens in a basically a climate that never stops in terms of gardening. Yeah. Do you get any yeah. time to garden yourself on a personal garden? Um, I have a personal garden, yeah. Um, we actually just moved up to the mountains, and we have deer, and I've never dealt with deer before. So that's been kind of a fun challenge for myself. But really, I want a garden at my house that I don't have to fuss with too much. And uh, actually, now my personal garden, it's kind of funny, is just leftover plants, <laughs> which I think is fine because I'm around, you know, all these fabulous designers and um Everything is so designed and all that. And in my own garden, I just pretty much do what I want to do. If I want to have, you know, red and yellow and, you know, whatever colors on one side and muted tones on the other, I do it. So um, I kind of feel my personal garden is my laboratory. Um, I'll put things in the wrong place. I'll move things around. I'll overfeed some stuff. I won't water things. I mean, I just kind of play around and don't give myself a lot of rules because I, I am so regimented in my job. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I, I do. I have veggies and um, cactus and succulents and pots and you know, it's kind of a collector's garden. My garden. I love it. You're like a mad scientist. I am. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I always have been. It's just so much fun, you know, to garden. It's just my passion. Yeah, it's the one thing that I could do for hours and hours, um, and then I realized, oh, I've been out here for like eight hours. I think I should go in, you know, kind of thing. So it, it's very appropriate that this is my job. I get paid to do this. It's awesome. When you're around friends and family, are you like a doctor? Are you, are you like a doctor? Do they come to you yes. with garden questions? Oh my god, how funny you should ask that. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. I. I used to talk to people a lot about gardening and now I just say, you know, Oh yeah, I work outside. Like I try not to say anything about it just because I do, I get asked a million questions. Um, and it's usually about house plants, which is so funny because all my house plants live outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad with house plants. Um, I find that a lot of like people get really guilty about killing plants. Um, especially like the stuff they buy at the grocery store, like the orchids and the, the cute little azaleas and hydrangeas and all those things that are actually grown to, to die, you know? Um, <laughs> so a lot of times I, I feel like I'm more counseling people like, you know what? It's okay. You can just compost that, you know, no, no, no guilt. You know, it doesn't mean you have a black thumb. This thing is not meant, this is not grown to go in a garden, you know? So I think I do a lot of that. It's more of a garden coach. <laughs> garden coach, garden therapist. Yes, garden therapist, exactly. I mean, don't you find that? I think most people that garden have to have a lot of people that, that do that to them, ask them, why why can't it, Why won't my orchid rebloom? And it's like, well, because, you know, orchids don't always rebloom. It's not a big deal, you know. Just go buy another one. <laughs> so. My wife and I were at a, at a market, a garden market, farmer's market, and we're talking yeah. to her friend who's a master gardener at a booth. And the yeah. lady just randomly walked up with a dead tomato and wanted her to diagnose why the tomato had died. <laughs> and she had lugged this yeah. thing to a farmer's market. And 
I got oh, some sympathy. God. There is I'm a bit of a rookie still in the garden, so I still get emotionally attached uh-huh. to certain plants. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. We have clients like that where, you know, I can see like if your grandmother gave you, a, you know, something that's precious or, you know, a Boston fern, she, she kept it alive for 20 years or something and you kill it. Then I, you know, I feel a lot of sympathy, but mostly I'm just like, you know, what? it's okay. You know, if I give somebody a gift, that's something living. I tell them I'm giving t- this to you to enjoy for a couple weeks. When it starts to die, just compost it. I won't be checking in on you. (laughs) So um, there's a lot of that too. Like if I go to someone's house, they're so embarrassed about their garden or whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. Come on. I love it all. Like, you know, I've seen gardens that were, you know, all the plants were still in the black pots and they were just arranged. And I, I love that too, because I walk around and see, oh, what do you got? You know? So, <laughs> I want to ask you, uh, Jennifer, you're on the front lines of gardening now. Do you know, maybe it's more of a prediction, this, is there anything that's going to be trendy or popular or hot in the next year or two that maybe people haven't heard about yet? Hmm. Oh, boy, that's really hard. I mean, I still think, I have some friends who don't believe this, but I still think succulent, um, and cacti are going to be a lot bigger. People are really going to come around because, you know, water is a finite source. And these are plants that are lovely and textural and flower and don't need a lot of water. Um, so I think there's going to be more of that, more of the grasses, people taking out their lawns. I find that that really um, was so, like when I started studying about, you know, five years ago, I mean, Taking out your lawn was taboo. I mean, living in the suburbs, I mean, you have to have a lawn. And now, you know, I drive around and I really see a lot of people taking them out. And I really think that's going to keep going, um, which I find very exciting because it's just fun. It's just fun to see what people come up with. Um, Also, um, I don't know. I mean, growing your own veg, I think that's still, you know, going to be really big. Uh, where people are kind of doing it on their own and, and trying things in pots or whatever, whatever they want to do. So, and two, I also see, well, you know what I would like is <laughs> I find like as a woman working in the gardening industry, there's not a lot of like good gardening um, working clothes for me. Um, when I'm looking around, I, I, I hope that that will be something more trending is women who work outside finding things to wear that are comfortable and but still flattering and and rugged you know i haven't found that yet i'm hoping that will be something you you (laughs) you just hit it i had an uh aha that's that's hot like there is no fashion for women in the garden no and i always try to be fashionable in the garden i mean i i have a lot of friends that are like oh jen you're so girly and it's like okay yeah, I am. I am. A, I'm, I'm a girl. That's why I do Garden Girl. I own it. Um, I, you know, like to wear lip gloss and <laughs> put my hair up and have cute jeans and things like that. I mean, I'm working with guys all day. I live with all men. You know, there has to be a balance. And, you know, this weekend I was looking for some pants and I was trying on Carhartt and I was trying Dickies and I was trying all these other ones. And they're all, they're cut for men. It's just like, it's really tough and I'm always breaking through my jeans and oh anyway I'm still on the lookout there's a couple of um, companies like the loose trading company I've gotten some cool stuff from them like socks and things like that that I find comfortable and you know can put up with me on my knees and you know climbing and stuff and getting stuff down my shirt and you know <laughs> so I, I noticed that in your introduction where most people want to choose jobs where they sit in an office all day under a fluorescent yeah. light. You wanted yeah. to be in the soil. Oh, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, you know, at Foothill, you have to take the whole, all the courses. And some of the courses were design courses where you actually had to draw and things. I mean, my drawing class, I pretty much cried every single class or would have to excuse myself. 
because it was murder for me. I mean, I made it through and I got a good grade. I pushed myself and I was really happy that I did. But I realized, you know, this isn't why, this isn't what I want to do. I want, I mean, I design, I pick plants, I do containers, um, I infill planting. I, you know, if something dies, I pick something to go in there. So there's a lot of design involved in my, in my, in my business, but I'm not sitting at a desk coming up with planting plans and stuff. That's not me. That's, mm. I couldn't work in a job like that. That's why I don't work for a design firm. You know, I, mm. I work in maintenance and it's perfect for me, really. I love it. You know, Jen, I glanced at the clock and our time is flying by. And yeah. now's the time in the show where we play a game called Five Quick Questions. Okay. This is your chance to share your wisdom and experience with rookie novice gardener. So are you ready to play? Sure. Question number one. What mm-hmm. What's the funniest or craziest mistake that you've ever made in the garden that you're willing to admit to in public? Oh, gosh. Well, when I first started working out, I would wear white. That was kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing. Um, I, you know, I've done all kinds of stupid stuff where I'll, we'll be working in a two-acre garden and I'll think, oh, I just need my pruners. And I'll go all the way to one side and realize, oh, no, I should bring my bag. I'll have to go all the way back and I'll get and I'll think, no, I'll just need this. You know, (laughs) Um, I do that a lot. It's like my brain is going so fast. I'm just like, why don't I just bring everything with me? So I make that mistake a lot. I'm usually running around like a chicken with my head cut off sometimes. Not so much anymore, but at first the guys would laugh at me like, why don't you just bring your whole bag, Jen? (laughs) So, you know, whatever. (laughs) Uh, question number two. Okay. If you were only allowed to grow one plant next year, what plant mm-hmm. would you have to grow? Oh. You know, I've always loved the plant Allegia capensis. It's a rescue. It's just so gorgeous to me. And I don't have one in my own garden. I really want to get one. So I'm going to try that. All right. My Latin is a little rusty. Help me with that one. It's Allegia, E-L-E-G-I-A, Capensis, uh-huh. C-A-P-E-N-S-I-S. Okay. I it's like a to, rescue. I like to put the links up to Wikipedia or to different garden centers in the Latin. Yeah. I'm always impressed with the Latin. That's very good. And and why did <laughs> you pick it? You it in your head in horticulture school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Now, in terms of question three, the internet, I want everyone to follow Jennifer on Twitter at Garden Girl, but it's spelled G-R-D-N-G-I-R-L. And you can uh, share her tweets on social media. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jennifer, do you have one or two favorite gardening resource websites that you could share? Um, Well, I really like the UC Davis um, IPM Mm-hmm. It's a website. Um, they have a lot of really good stuff about diagnosing plant problems and pests and all that kind of stuff. I, I really like that website. Um, mostly, I kind of rely on books, but I do Google a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, who okay. doesn't? Question four <laughs> is about books. Do you have a favorite okay. gardening book? Um, you know what? I have several, but... Um, I really love the American Meadow Garden by John Greenlee. I love that book. I use it a lot. It's completely dog eared. Um, Botany for Gardeners by Brian Capon was like one of my favorite books and really helped me a lot. I got that from school. Um, there's lots of great pictures and stuff. And then I think the third book would probably be like California Native Plants for the Garden by Carol Bornstein and David Frost and Bart O'Brien. Um, that thing's like a Bible. It's all the California native plants. Wow. There's a big movement towards natives, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, in California for sure. And it's, yeah, it's really big. Like you said, no. And then, of course, I have to say land prints, um, the landscape designs of Bernard Trainer too. I mean, uh-huh. he's pretty much why I'm doing what I'm doing, so. Nice. Isn't it amazing how... I just have this belief that uh, golf and gardening are a lot alike. Nobody wakes up and say, I want to be a golfer. They always have a great yeah. teacher. And I yeah. find all the great gardeners have amazing teachers. 
Yeah. You've it's studied true. with some yeah. of the best. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, you know, just growing up around my family. I mean, my parents always gardened, and, you know, my grandmother gardened, and it's just uh, just being around that is, it does, you know. My, my son is now doing gardening. He's been uh, doing this tree thing, and he's so, I can see him so into it, and it's so fun, you know. I love it. A question five, no right or wrong answer, but is there any plant that you've never grown that intrigues you and you would love to experiment with? Oh, gosh. Um, hmm. Gosh, I've grown so many plants. Um, no, not really. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, maybe like one of those big saguaro cactus. I think those are really cool. And also, I've always wanted to have a Palo Verde tree. I always think that those are so beautiful when I see them. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to try try some of those plants. I don't know if they do that well here. But I think they need that hot, hot, fast draining. Oh, so. des- yeah, desert-like conditions. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I see them, I'm just in awe, you know, or those giant euphorbia cactus or, you know, those kind of things that I just, you know, drool over when I see, so... <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, not too many of your neighbors would have a, an eight foot tall cactus. No, no, not at all. Mm-mm. Although I don't think the deer would eat it, so maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> we could try that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's different when you have different pests that you're not used to. Yeah, and they eat everything. And I just laugh at there's so many people in our neighborhood who are old timers and they still want to grow their roses and pit of sporn in the front yard and they just get decimated. It's like, oh, you know, give it up. <laughs> I mean, I have like salvias and um, agaves and stuff in my yard and they don't eat it at all. So I guess uh, they have more than enough that they don't have to eat it. They get to be yeah. choosy and picky. Yeah, I yeah. It. I just pick stuff that's like stinky and like really fat, you know, leaves or spiky. They don't seem to really like that. So, I have rabbits in my yard, and they get into the sunflowers, and they uh, oh. they don't touch the hot peppers, though. Yeah, that's pretty smart on their behalf. <laughs> yeah. We have squirrels. Squirrels are what messes everything up here. They dig like crazy. They have a little OCD. Those squirrels. Yeah, their brain is the size of an acorn, and I've seen them take two bites out of a hot pepper, then throw it away, take two bites out of a yeah. tomato, throw it away. Oh, my God. And they dig little little divots, like, all over the garden and mess up all the mulch, and it's like, oh, <laughs> get out of here. It's crazy. Well, for all the listeners, make sure you follow Jennifer on Twitter, at Garden Girl. I'll have the links up. And all the books and uh, websites and tips that Jennifer shared at backtomygarden.com. Uh, Jennifer, the time has just flown by. You've been a brilliant guest. Well, thank you. Thank we have, you a, li- we have listeners in 62 countries, all varieties, awesome. all kinds of gardens. So I want you to think of yeah. them all over the world. Can, I want to give you the last word today to the listeners. Can you leave us with either uh, a note of encouragement or a pearl of wisdom? Um, I, I, gardening to me is just, I mean, my boss and I, we always, my boss, Amy and I always say, you know what? It's just gardening. There's no emergency. It's just, it's a living thing. It's like raising a child. You know, you, you have expectations and sometimes they're met and sometimes they're not. And really it's okay. You know, if something dies, you know, learn from that. Don't feel it's a failure. Don't ever think you have a black thumb. Everybody can grow something, even the people that say they can't. Um, uh, It's just important to try and have fun and be outside and get your hands dirty and don't worry about being sweaty and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, gardening, like I said, is the only way that I know that you can engage your heart, your mind, your body, everything, your passion, it all can roll into one. Tremendous. Outstanding stuff. Thanks for being on the show, Jennifer. Thank you so much.